Hi, I'm Ben Young. Um, I'm talking with Mike Pollock. Is that correct? Uh, we're here talking after the Unlimited Workshop on Business Intelligence. Mike is the CEO of Rico, and he was talking this morning about leadership and how that's displayed through his company. So, one of the things that I want to dive into very quickly is he talks about um, people as investors. What, what, what do you mean by that? Often I yeah. hear the term, um, our greatest assets are people. I shudder every time I, I hear that because it, 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 people aren't an innate object. I mean, they're human beings, and, and, and a computer, a laptop, an iPad, an iPhone, whatever. I mean, they're, they're assets, yeah. and they've got a value, you, you can book those values. Um, people are assets like that. People, people are human beings that are, can move around at will. And one thing I think about the X and Y generation is that their attention span, as I said in my speech, is certainly a lot um, smaller than, than, than the older generations and they're adapt to change um, a lot more and a lot quicker than, yeah. than, than I think we're used to as employers. So when we come to, um, to looking at our, our, our people, um, we need to recognize that these people are a lot more mobile, um, they're used to change and uh, if they're being stimulated and rewarded company they're working and then there's a good chance that, that, that they're going to they're gonna stay. Um, but they view their, their job, their career, their employer um, as being, you know, what's in it for me? We've heard that phrase many times, you know, what's in it for me? And, 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 and uh, Roger spoke about when, when you do an interview now, we get interviewed by the employee because it's all about what's, you know, what's going to happen with them, what are the benefits for them and, and what can they get out of it? And I think you have to take that on board and recognize that they're going from company to company and saying, I'm Mary, I'm Johnny, I've got this skill set, I can bring this value to your company um, and invest my time and yeah. my career with you for a period of time. Yeah. What are you going to give me back? Yeah. What's my return for investing my time? Yeah. Um, you're going to give me flexible work time because we know that they prefer to work in a more flexible manner. Am I going to get an i4? Um, am I going to get an expensive car? I can't, what kind of company can I have? Because they just presumably assume they're going to get one, for example. So, so they're looking at us um, with a view to investing their time. And I, I believe that we need to respond by saying, you invest with us, and then in return, here's a potential career path for you. Um, and as long as we continue to give them the returns that they want, remuneration, obviously, yeah. um, then they will continue to invest their career yeah. lives. And, and that's just the view I've had for a while now. And, and I think it changes how you see people, yeah. and how you greet people when you come to see you. You know, yeah. all of a sudden, it's, wow, this person could bring some real value to Rico. Yeah. Um, how am I going to interact with that yeah. person? Rather than, here's the job, here's the specs, tick all the boxes and you're really lucky you might get a job. And you can't view it like that and they certainly don't view it like that. And so um, I think that the dynamics have changed yeah. and how we view them, I think you know, we need to change as well. Interesting. And following on from that, what what role do the values play within the leadership in the organisation? I think um, we, we spoke in the presentation about, about values I think sadly, most organisations have, the, um, have values that have been passed down from management to management, generation to generation, or from head office to, 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 um, to, to local offices, and, and really bear little resemblance to the company that is there. And, and, and that, I think, is all too common. <coughs> Your values really are a reflection who you are. So it's not a case of sitting down and saying, hey, this is what we'd like to be. We'd like to be a great employer. We'd like to be a cool place to work. Um, it really is what you are today. Now, yeah. that doesn't mean your values can't change, but I think the whole values proposition is a fantastic opportunity to do a real report today on what your company is, how it is, and then as a leader, you can then measure that against where you would like 
like to be yeah. or, or where you'd like to go. Um, and if the company is successful, all the more reason to dig in and find out what your values are because you need to understand um, we'll be just lucky, yeah. unlikely. Um, but if, so if we weren't just lucky and we've got ourselves into a position where we're, where we're performing um, at whatever measurements you want to choose well, then does it not kind of make sense to want to understand why? And, and to be honest, that's where we got. We got to the stage of saying, we are doing well, and, and we were happy and pleased about that, but I was concerned that we didn't truly understand why. Yeah. So by going to our people and pulling apart all the different ideas and opinions to, to come up with what we, our five core values, I think what we did there was we crystallized for our staff what it is that makes us successful. So they then can dwell on that and think about that. And then when they talk to potential um, employees or, or, or staff to come on board, that they can share that with them. They yeah. say, let me tell you about Rico. Yeah. Our first value is remarkable people. You know, in this organization, da, 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 da. Um, innovation everywhere. We're looking for people who want to change the company, continuously change the company. If you're into that, just want a job, you know, plug in your punch card, nine to five, this is probably not the right place to work. So all of a sudden, everybody can articulate what we believe our values yeah. are. And, and, and so I don't think it's just benefited the management team. Yeah. I think it's been a benefit to everybody to understand. Yeah. This is what's made us successful, so we're going to support, recognize, and reward yeah. those values when yeah. we see them being displayed. Yeah. And you even made a t-shirt out of it. We did, and <laughs> I, I, I kind of thought... Um, I had to get away from those plaques on the walls because yeah. that just wasn't going to work. So, so uh, it was coming up to to, to um, summertime last year, and uh, we have a relationship with Nike, and we decided to go and get the coolest, newest Nike gear there was, cool. knowing that, that that they'd be in the shops over summer, hundred yeah. dollars each. And, we, and with each of the five values, we created five symbols. Yeah. So we put those symbols on the front of the T-shirt. Yeah. That was all we. The hope there was that people over summer would say, hey, nice t-shirt, yeah. but it's for the symbols, you know? And, um, and then people would realize that, uh, you know, thumbs up, remarkable yeah. people, yeah. light bulb, innovation yeah. everywhere, yeah. the handshake, customers for life, yeah. the arrow going up, yeah. um, continuous improvement, yeah. and the green leaf, harmonizing with the environment. But it would then lead that person wearing the shirt to explain, yeah. this is what it is. Yeah. And that we felt we'd endorse it, and wow, that just went down incredibly well. In fact, we had people come to us and say, can I get a, another couple for my friends or family? Yeah, yeah. So it was a relatively inexpensive way to get it, to make it real yeah. and, 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 and foremost on people's yeah. minds. So, yeah, I mean, it, uh, there's awesome. myriads of ideas yeah. you can have, I'm sure, but that one seemed to work well for us. A, a big proponent that you talked about is your view of having customers for life. Could you quickly talk us through the technician story and what happened there? Yeah, I, uh, <clears throat> we all read in the textbook about how much it costs to get a new customer rather than look after the one you've got. We all, we all, we all know that. And common sense dictates it. Far better off looking um, after a new customer you've got than trying to, to, to find new ones. Finding new ones is important for growth, of course, but uh, there's no point in having growth if you're not looking after the customers you've already got. And in, in, our, in, in our business, um, it's all about the reliability of products and services, and the speed at which we can respond to customers um, in their time of need. Yeah. And um, as an example, um, traditionally we work nine to five, five days a week. Nowadays with some of the universities and the government departments, there is a requirement to, to be offering 24-7 service. But you know, the normal office environment um, is still during those normal working hours. Um, I, I share a story with our customers and our, our staff of a few weeks ago, getting a call at five o'clock on a, on a Friday evening. And the customer had a particular job to do, clear that we weren't going to get there until Monday morning, and um, that really caused a lot of stress yeah. and a lot of panic for that customer. So my response was, well, no problem, we'll have somebody come and visit Saturday morning. This business was happened to be out in the eastern suburbs, and um, I took a, a guess that we'd have some technicians that were capable solving that problem, living out. And I said to the customer, look, um, once I calmed it down, 
clearly he was stressed. Look, we'll have something there first thing in the morning. To which he responded, but no, you guys don't operate on a Saturday. And I said, well, no, we don't operate on a Saturday, but um, if you want your machine running for the weekend to do this particularly important job, then I'm going to have to do that. Otherwise, it's not going to happen. And then immediately, the customer turned around and started to tell us how wonderful we were and how he'd been using us for years. And I'm pretty sure he'll have told that story to a number of people. Yeah. I certainly hope so. Yeah. Um, on the way out of the office, got hold of a technician that lived in the area. He was going to call somebody else the next morning. Somebody went to his place of work. The problem was fixed. It wasn't a big drama. But I think it's those little things yeah. and many of those little things that make the customer experience one that he remembers. Yeah. And uh, you've got to share those stories with people to give them the boundaries yeah. um, in regards to how far we want them to go to ensure the customer satisfaction. And there has to be limits, but um, far better to go too far to satisfy the customer than not go far enough. Yeah. And as long as you learn from that, and, and uh, I always say, look, um, under promise, over deliver every single time. Yeah. Not very often in our industry that um, one of our people or our technicians goes further than I would have preferred, because at the end of the day, if you've got that customer. On one final note, could you share some tips for other CEOs around drive, being leaders in sustainability within the business? Yeah, I, um, I, I shared a story with, um, with the audience this morning in regards to where I see sustainability over the next three to five years. And uh, a lot of my views are, are formed through traveling Asia um, and Europe. Um, and I think people starting to understand that sustainability is not just about saving the planet. That is yeah. a component of sustainability. But sustainability is about building business to last. A business that's going to stand the test of time. A business that's going to be profitable. Profitable to be able to support your people, your staff, and your customers adequately. Um, really, it's common business sense. But what sustainability is really all about is just a continuous improvement in terms of efficiency reusing our natural resources um, and, and using less fossil fuels, obviously there's some cost-cutting benefits there to companies, which puts them on the bottom line. But looking within your own organization, at the way in which you operate, the way you do things, and constantly evaluating if you can do those more efficiently, ultimately puts more money in your pocket. And um, for people that don't embrace sustainability to save money, I kind of think that's a bit daft. <laughs> it sounds daft. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Thanks you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers.